Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. to put on first, but um, anyway, so, I'll, uh, so I've got an abbreviated version of what he was going what to talk the, about. What is the clay, Tom Hanks? You've never put the two pictures side by side? <laughs> Google for Clay Shirky. Yeah, Google for Clay Shirky and Google for Tom Hanks and you'll notice there's some similarity. Uh, back from the bosom buddy days. Um, um, anyway, uh, so uh, externalities. So. We're going to do a, um, I mean, the, the, the aim here is to sort of have an interactive session where uh, we're going to break out and uh, at some point and come back together with, uh, and do a little project building. Um, the session is about externalities, specifically positive externalities. Um, who here doesn't know what an externality is or does? Or I guess everybody knows what an externality is. Okay, good. Good, I'm glad. Liz doesn't know. Great, fantastic. Um, so an externality is something that affects, um, it, it affects value without being part of the system inherently. So it can add or subtract value. Uh, that value can be, uh, uh, there can be positive or negative externalities. So uh, the canonical version, uh, canonical externality is pollution. Pollution destroys values for the, uh, for the pollutees without necessarily um, offering any compensating value. Um, social capital is a positive externality. The value of the healthy social fabric creates value without anyone really paying for it directly. Um, music being uh, composed of bits has positive externality for users. Um, HTML's view source had a great positive externality for the growth of the web. Um, just being able to, uh, just by the very dint of it actually being exposed, you could, uh, you could learn, you could grow, and uh, you could bolt things onto the side of, of, of sites. Um, Social software benefits enormously from, from positive externalities. Um, good computers and good networks uh, benefit most applications. Um, specifically, the, the move to, to broad, broadband has really enabled a lot of things like Flickr and, uh, and uh, video sites and music sharing and, and video sharing. Um, and uh, Match.com has definitely benefited from the ubiquity and growing comfort with uh, internet use. Uh, a lot of these sites have, but Match.com is one example. Um, and uh, Flickr, for example, benefits from the, the, the cheap CCD cameras and uh, kind of the ubiquity of M MMS finally taking shape and, uh, and cellular networks. Um, and, of course, delicious benefits from the URL, just the fact that the URL exists. There's sort of a global, uh, single global namespace that ties together arbitrary resources so we can tag them in the first place. And, and delicious benefits greatly from that. Um, so that's basically all there is to the introduction. Um, what I wanted to do was um, I thought we should brainstorm some, some externalities, some positive externalities. Some, um, I mean, I guess the question is what is there out there that's right now that is not in and of itself social but can be infrastructure for no, novel social uh, applications? And I thought we'd just brainstorm that and sort of uh, shout them out, and I was just going to type them up here. Um, well, I can't see what the hell I'm typing. Thanks to my arrangement of monitors. Here we go. Um, so, anybody want to shout what I mean? Just for an example, one, one example might be PayPal, uh, an application which is not in and of itself social, but enables some, some interesting social behaviors. Another one might be RSS. Um, yes? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> if I misspell anything, just pretend I know how to spell I just can't see. <laughs> or coffee, or any of those things. <laughs> um, uh, Wi-Fi hands. Free Wi-Fi. The spaces in which places like red wine or chocolate or coffee have and always have been consumed. The public house in the UK in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> really, there's, there's actually kind of an interesting intervention that it made and in, uh, how it changed culture, but... Um, 
uh, a cafe today. Um, Bryant Park in New York. Okay. Bluetooth? Bluetooth? Inline. You have you have impressions of the route and the conditions of the road which you could share with others. This is a right and it could be an individual as if you Okay. So how would you categorize that as it's it's individual it's it's sort of it's similar to rating systems. Rating systems? So rating systems in general? Again, I can't see what I'm typing. I think of some of the, I mean, so that the activity that we're going to get to, I'm trying to think of some um, specifically networked applications and things like that. I mean, these are all great ideas. Just, just uh, some, another couple of ideas just to sort of get, get things going. Webcams, for example, USB keys. Um, one of the activities that we're going to get to sort of, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I've got a specific activity in mind afterwards. I mean, I'm really thinking specifically of uh, hardware and software and, and online applications. I'm thinking specifically of things like, uh, things like uh, cheap chips, um, Wi-Fi, as you mentioned, instant messenger. Um, it's specifically related to the activity that we're going to do. Basically, what we're going to do with the activities is take some of these ex externalities and build things out of them. So, um, you know, uh, Nopix, for example, Kinko's is another one. Um, Things that, 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 that exist in the world that have this, that have the ability to be used in, uh, in building applications in interesting ways by tapping those externalities. So in the same way as Flickr tapped the, the fact that everybody has a camera phone, in the same way that uh, Delicious tapped the fact that there is a URL out there that you can use online to build an application out of. Not necessarily, just, you know, so for example, the record industry, uh, a, a massive externality of the fact that they put bits onto CDs was that you can take them off of CDs again. That was not their intention. It had nothing to do with group or individual use. It was more about, um, it was more about they had a certain business model that had these, these interesting side effects. Um, and, and, and that has resulted in, in novel, innovative uses. GPS? USB sticks? Sorry? You said it yourself, USB sticks. USB, sorry, USB sticks, yeah. G-R-U-R-L. Hmm? G-R-U-R-L. Okay. Cheap color printers. Printer, scanner, combo. Yeah. 
shouting them out. Anything that comes to mind. Projectors. Projectors. What about um, sensors? I mean, that's kind of what you were getting at a little bit, is sensors, the ability to build sensors into anything. I mean, a CCD is sort of a sensor. Sort of a sensor. It is a sensor. I just, I'm not a suggestion, but just thinking, but I think we're looking at a combination of things that, from one side, hello, kind of meaningful individual activity, so you can do something for yourself, regardless if others are there. Mm -hmm. And it's also kind of have potential to make this activity visible for others and mm -hmm. kind of connect around them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Voice over IP. Voice over IP. So an example might be asterisk. I know that's a favorite of plays is asterisk. You know, the idea that you can bring voice over IP system in-house and use it both for in-house as well as external communications really changes to group dynamics. Barcodes. Barcodes. Mm-hmm. Why not? <laughs> Any more? Code sharing. Uh, I think that's the most interesting thing about the ESP is that you can share a portion of the code on your PSP with another person on an ad hoc basis. PSP as in PlayStation personal? Yeah, oh, that's interesting. It's, so you, people can get together and try out. Up to 16 people can share a game. If one but only one of them on. Well, that's, that's probably a good, uh, good bench to start with. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide up into, uh, for about 20 minutes, into uh, groups. And I'm going to arbitrarily pair the tables as we go down. We're going to have... Uh, hello? I can't whistle. So, um, so I hope you came up with some interesting products and projects and have registered the appropriate domains, patents, <laughs> etc. Um, everyone at that table did. You didn't Sorry, do that? Just filed it. You just filed it? Yeah. yeah. Before he files it, you better file your... Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to have one person or two people from each group come up and talk about, in turn, uh, the couple of projects that you came up with. And, uh, and uh, that group there will begin arbitrarily. Yeah. Do you want to come? So. Yep. Hello. All right. So, um. <laughs> you know those audio tours for museums? Um, okay, so imagine that you have an audio tour for the whole world. Um, so the idea is uh, a phone that's GPS aware that you can be out in the world and call a number and leave a story or a song or any piece of audio, a conversation, tied to the place you're at. Um, the phone already knows where it is, so it records that. Um, and the idea is this, this ephemeral thing that stays in the place where you left it. So I could go up to Tank Hill and say, uh, on a windy day in July of 2004, I married my wife here. And then anyone coming by there will be alerted as a par uh, participant by a message on their phone saying, there's a story here. Would you like to, to hear it? They could call a number and hear the story. Um, more, a further evolution of this idea is leaving soundtracks to places. Here's a, here's a song that I like to listen to here. Um, having this interface with your iPod so that um, if uh, there's a story or a song left by a trusted friend, it actually will interrupt what you're already listening to to play you that audio tied to that place when you get there. Or if it's not a trusted friend, it will just kind of give you the option to do so. That's pretty much it. Oh, and we decided to call it place casting, but that's already registered, so. <laughs> was, uh, what was he? So that was uh, both your ideas or one idea? It was, that was a collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming.
right there. Hi. Um, so we had several ideas. Um, our first idea was um, around um, iPods and bars. So the idea here is that basically you get to bring your music player, whether it's an iPod or um, some other music player, you bring it to a bar and you can uh, broadcast your music uh, to other people. And um, th so from, from then uh, there are several things that you can do. You can, for example, message uh, a, a, cell, a cell phone number and at that point the owner of that music currently playing basically gets uh, that message and um, can choose to respond. Uh, it's anonymous or maybe uh, based on the music selection that you decided to bring you have some kind of tags on, uh, that, that you get to wear and um, as, as you roam around and some people have, other people have uh, so, uh, similar music selection to yours um, your tags light up and you can make a kind of the, the connection here. So that was the first idea. The second idea that we briefly talked about was uh, around theaters and mobile. So when you when you go to a theater right now, you are basically just watching what's going on. Um, the idea is that you can uh, exchange messages with other people that are participating uh, or viewing the same play, and maybe you can even submit uh, kind of feedback to the play as it's going on and uh, the, the play is modified. Uh, the third idea was uh, around stadiums and uh, and uh, posters. So you can, as as you are watching a game, uh, you can you would probably be describe this a little bit better than than I do. Okay. Very quickly, the idea is you would pay in a think a two-sided stadium. You make your large contribution, and the pr cheap printers in each row on the other side of the stadium print out sheets for people to hold up and so you can hold up, you know, marry me Sue types of things and everyone on the other side of the stadium thinks that someone else keys it into their cell phone and says, okay, I want to marry, just send back, yes, I will, and people hold up all that stuff. Who's the spokesperson for you guys? Do I, do I do oh. okay. It's interesting to hear about the, the overlaps and ideas. The, uh, the place casting, actually, I have a project called Street Stories. We've, we've almost got it implemented on this, pretty much. So. Um, our group ended up thinking a lot about crowded spaces with strangers. So situations like highways, airports, airplanes, places where you, you don't necessarily know people around. And then we ended up with two kinds of ideas. One was around transportation. So what if there's something from, what if you're in an airport or you can communicate with people, someone in the airport, and you want something from afar? Uh, like a, a chocolate, a very particular chocolate from Amsterdam, um, you can end up negotiating uh, some sort of either exchange for, for that chocolate, um, to move that chocolate from Amsterdam to wherever you are. Another idea we were talking about was sort of um, technologies for facilitating carpools. So um, there's... For example, an example of uh, right now going across the Bay Bridge, people completely unknown to the drivers stand and wait to get in a car, and uh, people pick them up because because the if you can get in the the carpool lane, you go a lot faster. But there would be a lot of a lot of ways of facilitating that. The other kind of idea, other than transportation, we were also talking about swapping or markets. So um, a notion of of airline seating. What if you're sitting in the lobby? And um, you can communicate over wireless with everybody else who's going to get on that airplane right now about, well, maybe you have a first-class seat and you'd be willing to take something for that. Um, you could negotiate it right there. Music, you know, there, there's things that are happening, again, with the iPod that could happen better. What, what about just um, broadcasting not just your list to the other person of what you have in your library, but your overlap? 
your overlap between your list and someone else's list. Um, names, personal information, or business cards. So this might be just incredibly simple, but what if all of our computers right here were just broadcasting a little set of uh, business information or personal information about us? Um, there are all kinds of things that you could write in order to aggregate that. We were uh, just in, in thinking about, um, especially places like an airplane, what if you packed a lunch and someone in the back didn't and they're starving? Um, can you go, can someone say, oh, I'd really like a sandwich or something? Um, and can you facilitate that sort of thing? Uh, or books, you just finished the book. You brought a book on the airplane and you just finished it. And what are you gonna do with it? You're just gonna leave it in the seat pocket. Um, you could negotiate with someone else um, to really swap for something else. So swapping in markets and transportation in these crowded spaces. Our group, uh, we really like the idea of uh, a bumper sticker on a car that is uh, sort of active content and uh, we can change it to anything we want and sort of, there was a Californian in the group who sort of inspired some of this thinking about, well, you know, you could be broadcasting your uh, personal playlist or something to other cars and just have a bumper sticker that says, you know, tune in and listen in. Um, so once again, a sort of isolated but fundamentally potentially social environment. Um, we also uh, talked about rural infrastructure and uh, we had the idea of delay tolerant computer networking perhaps hosted in uh, cellular phones of visitors um, where there's no infrastructure providing some infrastructure for the exchange of important information. And also I thought a very interesting idea that we didn't discuss much was uh, the use of um, GPS and other tracking systems for disease prevention or outbreak prevention or containment or tracking of uh, individuals. Uh, that's actually a huge issue and uh, it's, it's potentially a very valuable uh, solution. Thank you. So our, our group came up with a, uh, a concept uh, called the phone gnome, um, which the phone gnome, no. G-N-O-M-E, um, based on the, the premise of, of the garden gnome, uh, which serves as the basis for, for road trips, <clears throat> where you steal somebody's garden gnome and then you go running around the country or world with it. Um, and so what we were thinking is that it might be interesting to have a, a, a pair of cell phones that could only call each other. Uh, one would be left with a person who couldn't leave their house or was bedridden in a hospital or was somehow... Uh, physically constrained, and the other would go walking around the world, uh, and you could they could call in and just sort of ask the person to take whoever happened to have it at that time to take a picture um, of whatever they were looking at um, and uh, and check in on it. So uh, uh, it might also have a picture of their their face on it or some some way of of uh, um, of having it serve as a totem for for the person person who who couldn't get out um, and allow it to be passed from from person to person, perhaps within a, a family or social network or. Um, perhaps going going beyond that and uh, uh, serving as the basis for for other trips and and carrying information um, back to them that they couldn't otherwise get to. Uh, we had another idea that was sort of half formed, and I don't know if anybody else wants to present it, but I, uh, otherwise otherwise that's that's the phone now. So a little bit early, and uh, we can just break early, but. Uh, I don't know, it's just it's just kind of interesting to see some of the some of the externalities that are afforded by some of the, the, the products they use every day and some of the services they use every day that you don't really think of putting together in any interesting uh, interesting combination. And uh, I know I spend an awful lot of time thinking about them, not much time implementing, unfortunately, but um, uh, thinking about how to put these things together. Um, so you know, when you're in a, in a situation where you see technology in sort of a social space that isn't being used in any social manner, for example, um, uh, Wi-Fi hubs in a, um, in a cafe, everybody gets free Wi-Fi, but there's nothing really taking advantage of the fact that all of you are sitting in the same place at the same time. I was mentioning one of my favorites is sitting in a Starbucks and finding somebody sharing their iTunes, and you listen to their iTunes and then wait until it cuts out and then sort of look around to see who shut their laptop. And you get to know 
a little bit more about them, the familiar stranger, you get to know their musical tastes. Uh, another one is actually playing the last pl song that they played out loud for a few seconds and then going on to the next one that they played out loud for a few seconds. At some point, somebody sort of, you know, the head pops up and you, you know who you've, uh, who you, who you've identified um, just by, by identifying that you know who they are. And uh, anyway, um, uh, another one is, for example, USB keys. Could you carry USB keys around and plug them into sort of, sort of take a penny, share a penny? Could you plug USB keys into a uh, cafe um, jukebox, as it were, and leave a tune and take another tune with you? And if you were to do that, and specifically if you were, if you were allowed to choose which tune you left and which one you took, at a certain point would certain cafes start you know, collecting only particular tunes? Um, I know. I, I have another one. It's just on the yeah. lawyers topic. Yeah. <laughs> Similar to USB keys. Um, and this is not my idea. This is a, co a colleague, a friend of mine. Um, that I, but I thought it was brilliant. Uh, after the shuffle, the iPod shuffle came out, because it's a small flash-based hard drive, very easy to plug into somebody else's computer, um, and not your main library. It's, it's a kind of disposable in terms of what's on it. So what he was using the shuffle for is he'd get bored of his music. So you walk over to someone else in the office and say, plug this into your computer and fill it with 100 random songs. And then he'd listen to it for a couple days. And when he got bored of those, he'd plug it into somebody else's computer. And it, was this, it became this way of casually sharing totally random, unidentified music with your friends. Yeah, there's similar stuff done I was mentioning with uh, on planes. If you sit next to somebody who's got an iPod or a shuffle or whatever, uh, offer to share, uh, to swap just for the trip. And it's amazing uh, kind of different music you hear. I mean, the number of times you get onto a plane and sit down and go, oh, my music library again. I've got five hours of music I listen to all the time. The person next to you might be interested in that, especially when you've got like a shuffle where you could just trade and keep. I mean, you know, there's not much that's going to wear out and, uh, and you can just carry it around. If you want to ever wipe it, you just plug it into your laptop again. So anyway, just think about those. I, I love thinking about those sort of things that you can do that take advantage of the fact that you've got these small, cheap devices, these uh, cheap to free networks that you frequent all the time. People are around all the time and not really putting those together very often. And still finding, we tend to find Delicious and Amazon, all these places really interesting because you can go online and share this experience with people. And you'll be sitting next to, I, I know with uh, Stephen, he and I were just... Uh, are reading a story about Steve Jobs, the autobiography, uh, not autobiography, the, the biography that was just, uh, uh, they were trying to uh, shut it down. Um, and both Stephen and I ended up on the Amazon page within seconds of one another. The fact that we did that and we were sitting next to each other was luck I happened to notice. But how many people in the room happened to be looking at that page at that moment? Um, things like that. It's, it's sort of a, uh, an interesting way of, of, of thinking about um, uh, having more of a shared experience when you're actually in a space together. I know that seems bizarre, but... Um, uh, it's not exactly social software, but um, anyway, that was about that was about the the extent of the exercise. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks. And I think it's uh, lunch in 15 minutes. <laughs>